Silent Hill Ascension is the most predatory game I've seen in years. Not only is it predatory, it is the biggest kick in the teeth we've had from Konami in a long time, especially since PC got cancelled. And if you like me have been waiting patiently for years for a new Silent Hill game, then this is not the way that Konami should have started off. Of course, Silent Hill 2 Remake has come in and the other projects as well, but it doesn't inspire confidence and when this is what we get to kick off the new launch of games. One quick look at the reviews and it speaks for itself. Now in the game you have the choice to decide what happens, slightly similar to maybe how a Telltale game might play out, except of course you're playing with millions of other players. But of course, there aren't actually millions of other players because the game is absolute dog shit. That's not to say that there aren't people playing the game, there is quite a few people playing but I doubt there's millions at all and the choices that you are making are absolutely meaningless. But what I mean by this is in order to make a decision on what happens in the game, you have to spend currency. Now this currency can be earned through solving puzzles, participating in QTEs, and also I believe in catch up videos if you watch the next day. However, the amount you get is quite small in comparison to someone who, mm, I don't know, puts in their credit card and says, fuck you, I'm making this decision, you guys can get fucked. What this means is the only people that will have any kind of meaningful choice in this game are the whales. If we take a look at how much it costs for the transactions of the currency, we can see that it goes up quite a lot. And if we take a look at how many points are actually being spent per decision, we can do some quick maths to determine how much exactly people are spending in order to compete with others. Now, I did want to quickly just add for context, because I didn't do this in the original video, how much points that you get uh, from playing the game normally to give you some context. So right now I have 4.2k points. Uh, look at my goals. I can get 200 for logging in. 200 for contributing to a decision and earning 400 you get an extra 200. So like these are your daily goals, they refresh every day, you can get 800 points for doing these, you can get 1.5k points for your weekly goals here. Okay so some puzzles are locked behind the season pass, you need to spend £20 for season pass. Uh, you can only do one if you're a free to play player. Do all of these puzzles where you get 400 in total I guess per puzzle. At the minute there's 24 levels, but once that's all exhausted you can't do any more, that's it. So let's get back to the video. You can see that someone has spent 153,000 influence points. Now this is not obtainable unless he's saved every single point that he's ever had from every puzzle to get that amount of money. Now if we actually have a look and see how much it is to purchase more influence points, we can clearly see on the bottom right hand side it costs £20 to purchase 26,400 influence points. Now if we times this by 6 we can see that that's 158,400 influence points or £120 British sterling or $150 if you're American. Now if we do some more math, we can see that 2.2 million points in the chosen option and one person has contributed 153,200 of those points and the impact of that player can be calculated as the ratio of the points they contributed to the total points of that option. So the impact of this player is 153,200 divided by 2.2 million, which is 6.964% and no, I wish I was making that number up. 69 baby. But what that means is if you can clearly see on the page that if this person decided to put his points into any of the other two options then that would almost determine the choice decided into the amount of points that the other two options have. If only you spent another £40 eh? Not only does it suck that if you are just a normal player and you don't want to spend any money or you only want to spend like £10 or something like that which would be fair enough like obviously you contribute to the game it's free after all but your choice would absolutely have no meaning against someone that just comes along spends £200 and says I want to pick this decision screw you guys I'm doing whatever I want. What is also pretty true about this game is like, <laughs> unbelievably you actually get a badge that says that you are the top influencer aka You've spent the most points, bought the most tri market transactions and made the decision and you get a special little gold crown for it as well. So it encourages people to spend their real money. Which is just absolutely ridiculous when you think about it. And what's actually ridiculous about it is the fact that they know that like, the average Joe is not going to get that Tom Pumpkins badge. The average player, you're, you're not going to get that badge. Hell no. The only people that get that badge are going to be people that are spending £200 for a one day decision or whatever it is, or like that one decision to make a choice in, in the game. And there are multiple choices to be made after all. And these people are spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds. And if you don't have, if you spend like £100 and your decision doesn't get picked, you just spend £100 for nothing. There's no, there's no, you don't get anything for it. Like what? Is it? Is this not insane? One of the most extreme examples of this, I'll show on the screen right now, where you can see someone spent over 142,000 points for nothing because his decision wasn't even close to being made. And here we can see another example of this where there's 220,000 points being spent 
versus 150,000. Now, obviously, if we do have a look through the rest of them, this isn't applicable in in, in, in quite a lot of the cases, to be honest. Like, there is 22,000 points being spent here, 20 odd thousand points being spent here. But you've got to remember the baseline decision for something being made is 200 points. So all of these 20,000 points for each individual person, this isn't this isn't legit gameplay. This isn't from this isn't all from puzzles. Like a lot of this is microtransactions. I'd even argue that the majority of it is. You might have noticed in this video, if you do know the game, I haven't even touched on the battle pass. The fact that there's a battle pass in this kind of game is just absolutely ridiculous, to say the least. They just force some battle passes into anything these days. So you might be sat there thinking, but Iridium, people spend loads of money on FIFA and loot boxes. I mean, they spend loads more money than this, right? Well, yes. I guess you'd probably see in these other examples, like loot boxes, FIFA, coins, stuff like that. People spend probably a bit more money, right, individually. The difference is, in FIFA and these other games and loot boxes, even though they are absolutely predatory and I don't condone microtransactions in any way, especially when they're paid to win, in these examples, you actually do get something. You benefit from that. Like you can get, for instance, in FIFA, you get fodder cards that can be used in squad building challenges or loot boxes. You get something, you get a reward. If you don't get picked, your decision doesn't get picked, you get nothing. You get absolutely zero. You don't benefit at all. These people are spending hundreds of pounds and they're throwing money at the wall for nothing. You don't even get anything for it. So you might turn around and say, well, that's their decision. I mean, it's their money at the end of the day. And I guess that's correct. The way that this system is designed, for instance, the top and influencer badge, as stupid as it is, like, obviously I don't want that badge. I don't care less about it. Maybe you don't care less about it either. But there are people out there that do care about that. They want to be the top dog. They want to be the guy that throws the most money at this game and has this badge to show up against others just for like ego reasons or whatever. And we shouldn't be condoning this kind of actions because the more that they get away with it, the more that they're going to force out microtransaction games which is what they've been doing for years and years anyway, but they're just going to keep forcing it down our throats. And the more that we take it, and the more that we don't vote with our wallets, the more that these things happen. And that is why this game is the most predatory game I've seen in years. Hey guys, if you made it to this part of the video, then thank you so much for watching. If you do like the video, then please, please, please like and subscribe. These kind of videos take a long time to make. There's a lot of editing involved and research as well. But I'll be sure to be pumping out content like this as much as I possibly can. So thank you once again, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. Peace.